guys. So today, finally, I'm going to do this addiction versus dependence video. <laughs> Thank you guys all, um, all the ones that commented on that video a couple weeks ago when I was like, hey, I need your help. Um, thank you so much. Sorry that it took me so long to do this. I, I put it off for a week. Um, you know, I wanted to give you guys time to get more feedback and then it got pushed back for my mental health. And then I tried to upload it Friday and deleted half of my footage. So, uh, Total honesty, I'm just uh, recording it all over. I'm not even going to try to duplicate the footage. It's too much of a pain in the ass. And um, I just wanted to kind of start over and give it a different format anyway. So here we are. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jessica. I'm a woman in long-term recovery after a 14-year opiate addiction. And on this channel, we talk about recovery, substance use disorder, mental health issues that I am qualified to speak on, and anything in between there. I am a certified peer. I'm also a certified Narcan trainer and um, all of my contact information is in my description box below like it always is. So if you guys need anything, don't forget to reach out to me. Okay, so thank you guys all so much for everybody who left comments. You guys were divided right down the middle. Um, I printed them off and have them sitting right here. So if you see me, you know, looking that's what i'm looking at is okay so i printed them so i could quote you guys correctly i'm not going to say anybody's names uh because i really didn't get any feedback about whether i could share your names or not but just a couple of you so i want to um just go through these comments and respond to each of them if that's okay with you guys uh <laughs> i hope that you like this format uh if you don't let me know and if i ever do a video you know like this again then i'll do it a different way but, um, like I said, you guys were split. Um, half of you thought that there was a difference between addiction and dependence, and the other half of you thought that they were the same. I'm just going to go through the comments that I had and respond to them and kind of tell you guys how I feel about it. And the first one that I got says, addiction is when it reaches the level of being uncontrollable. And I, before I read the rest of it, that is a great word because addiction and uncontrollable are one and the same in my mind. They go hand in hand. Dependence is more physical. You can be physically dependent but not addicted. Like you can be dependent on medication but still take it as prescribed. And I think that's a great point. Great point because like I said, addiction is uncontrollable. Uh, no matter how hard you try, my experience, uh, my own personal experience, and from what I have seen helping others since I've been able to get to that point in my life. No matter how hard we try, um, addiction isn't something we can control and operate with our lives successfully. Dependence is more physical. So you can be physically dependent but not addicted. Like you can be dependent on your medication but still take it as prescribed is what they said. And that's very true. And one of the things that I read in my research that I wanted to share with you guys was that's kind of where there is almost an imaginary line drawn between dependence and addiction. And I know that when I was doing my research, I was thinking, well, once when I was using, you know, once I made that jump from A to B, from doing this thing to doing this thing, that's when I consider that I was like in full-blown addiction then. If you are taking your medicine as prescribed, you can still be dependent on it. If you're dependent on your medication, that means like if your doctor takes it away from you or you no longer have calls to take it anymore, when you stop taking that medication, you go through withdrawals because your body is experiencing the loss of having that medication and it does make you go through withdrawals. If you're addicted, you go through those withdrawals as well. The difference here is that if you are just dependent on that medication and you stop taking it when you're supposed to, you don't continue to seek it out. When you become addicted to that substance, you will seek that medication out regardless of the consequences. And it may not start out as regardless of the consequences, but most people eventually get there. Uh, so addiction is a big change in your behavior. A lot of people suffer job loss or broken relationships within their family, or there's a lot of behavioral changes that come from addiction. 
<clears throat> before I get into uh, too much like nerdiness on you guys, I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, love your videos. Oh, thank you so much. I think dependence means the same thing as addiction. But to me, addiction has more negative connotation in society. Dependent seems to be a more socially acceptable term and less stigma associated around it. And I'm so glad that somebody made this comment. That's an amazing point. If you tell people uh, that you suffer with addiction, it changes the way people look at you. Nine times out of ten. Every once in a while you'll get somebody that, um, you know, doesn't look at you funny or... Or treat you different and that's you know if you tell them you're an active addiction or if you tell them that you're in recovery and even though that i have years in recovery when i tell people that i'm in recovery i get a lot of uh, side eyes <laughs> about it and some of the conversations that people come up and have with me are really good but some of them are not and addiction has a very negative connotation to it. it has a lot of stigma around it and that's why there you see a lot of movement especially in like the harm reduction community and in a lot of the recovery communities to not use that word anymore because it does have such negative just vibes about it i think that's interesting that you think they're the same though i like i said i love getting feedback from you guys another person commented and said i grew up with an alcoholic father let me just stop and say that i'm sorry for that i grew up with an alcoholic stepfather and my mom was an alcoholic or they both still are an alcoholic and i don't have anything to do with them so i know how hard that can be she went on to say once you are dependent on something you are addicted both addiction and dependency means you crave or need whatever it may be. That's another excellent point because whether you are addicted or you're dependent, there is a chance that your mind and your body is going to crave that. And when I was doing my research, that is one of the things that I saw about dependence. And one of the things that I like wanted to make sure that I said to you guys was if you're dependent on a substance and you have cravings, experience withdrawal, but you can refrain from continued use of that substance, even though you are, you know, fighting those cravings and you're going through that withdrawal and you can refrain from going out and seeking that substance in another way, shape or form, whether it's going to another doctor or going and buying it on the street, whatever the case may be. That's where the line between addiction and dependence is drawn, because when you are on the addiction side of things, when that substance is taken away from you and you start going through those cravings and, you know, going through that physical withdrawal and the mental and emotional struggle of it all, where people that are dependent will stop, put their head down and get through it or whatever it is for them. People that are already addicted to the substance, we don't stop there. We will do whatever we need to do to get that substance to alleviate those symptoms and a lot of times to mask whatever it is that we're using that substance for you know to cover up and put a blanket over the next one says addiction is a disease we know as a disorder of the brain it's very true dependence to me seems to occur before addiction first we can become dependent on whatever it is drugs food shopping gambling or even people then I feel dependence can turn into addiction, possibly depending on the person and even vice versa. That is very interesting because a lot of people don't think that you can be dependent on anything but drugs. And that is so not the case. You can be dependent on how much caffeine you drink during the day. You can be dependent on online shopping. Thank you for saying that addiction is a disorder or a disease of the brain because it is. It is classified actually as a chronic brain disorder and one of the um, doctors that I read about in my research that doctor says dying of addiction in this day and age is like dying of a cold it's totally unnecessary because it's highly treatable it may not be curable but it is treatable and our goal is the same as it is for anyone with a chronic condition which is to die with it not from it I was really glad that he said that because I think that a lot of people are under the misconception that when you get into recovery, that you are like cured or that when you stop using drugs, that you're cured from your addiction. And that's not the end of it. And that's not the case. I will suffer from this disease for the rest of my life. I'm consciously making a decision every day to 
not pick up and put myself and my life and my loved ones back in the situation that I was when I was in active use. This is a disease that I will have for the rest of my life until I take my last breath. It sounds really negative in a lot of ways to say that, but it's not. It's not because I think that in order to fight against anything, we have to remain very vigilant and aware of it. And that's why I say and agree with that, that addiction is a disease that we know is a disorder of the brain. I agree with that. And thank you so much for making that comment. The last comment that I have, you guys, um, so I'm going to try to wrap it up because I don't want this video to be too long. It says, when I think of addiction, I think of recreational drugs that become out of control to the point where you can't function without them. Dependence, in my opinion, is medical drugs that your doctor has prescribed for you. And I think that a lot of people think that. Um, I know that when I'm talking to like family members, I find that a lot of family members are very surprised to realize that their loved one's addiction started with a doctor's prescription. And I'm not saying that's, um, I'm not going to give out anybody else's names, but this comment is my dad, so I can give out his name. <laughs> but I, I feel like, a lot of people, like family members, are surprised to learn that that's how someone's addiction started because things were a lot different, you know, when like our parents were growing up. And my dad even goes on to say there, you know, um, this is his opinion. He's part of an older generation. And he says, when I was young, they home cooked their drugs. And today's problem comes from the medical industry with doctor subscribed meds. They give you a pill for a pain, you still have the pain. Here's your stronger one. It continues on and on. So what started as medical turns into an addiction that is frowned upon by the public. And then they realize that they have created a monster. So uh, there you go. If you guys ever wonder why I love my dad so much, that comment right there it is because, um, you know, he gets it. And I like I was saying before I read the rest of his comment, a lot of people in general think that if it's something that your doctor gives you, that there are not going to be any um, dangerous side effects. You know, well, you think, well, if my doctor gave it to me, I should be okay to take it. And I'm not going to have any side effects that aren't listed on this little pamphlet or that he tells me about in the office. And unfortunately, um, you know, just like my dad said, they give you a pill for the pain, still got the pain, here's your stronger one, and it goes on and on and on, and it does. And, you know, the opiate crisis, this drug crisis that we are in right now has been going on for way longer than the Sackler family has been involved in it. But a lot of people, you know, associate the opioid opioid crisis with the Sacklers because when they invented Oxycontin and did all the things that they did with Oxycontin to get it out there on the market to make all their money, they turned a lot of people that were legitimate pain patients into people that are now struggling with an addiction or in recovery. And that's a, that's a big thing. Um, and you also had a lot of people that you know, during that era when Oxycontin first hit the market and the Sackler family was doing what they do, they were on pain medicine that was managing their pain fine. And then they would go into their doctor's office. They would go in, you know, to get a refill on their prescription or to have a checkup. And if they mentioned anything about their pain being uncontrollable or worse than what it was the last visit or whatever, doctors were prescribing them Oxycontin. And Oxycontin is highly, highly, highly addictive. And, you know, it took a lot of people from being on the dependent side of things. I feel like, in my opinion, I think that Oxycontin played a big hand in changing people from being dependent on their medication to manage their pain took a lot of people from the dependent side of things and brought them over to the addiction side of things because Oxycontin is a really good pain management drug. It is. It works really well. Did not ever need to be marketed as or distributed as a everyday pain 
medicine. And that's what it was. And instead of, you know, people going and taking Advil or, you know, a lower level pain medicine, they got bumped up to this Oxycontin and it just, it created uh, a bigger epidemic than what was already going on because this drug epidemic has been going on for way longer than the year 2000. Anyway, I could go on and on about the Sacklers and all of that, and I'm not going to do that in today's video. You guys let me know what you thought about this. Thank you again so much for your comments. There is a lot of research that I did and like stuff that I wrote down. And the only thing I want to say before I let you guys go is this. The biggest thing that separates dependence and addiction is that crucial moment when that substance is either no longer available or gets taken away from you. And that crucial moment when you no longer have access to that substance anymore, if you are just dependent on that substance, Yes, you're going to experience withdrawals. Yes, you may experience cravings. But if you are not in an addiction and you're not addicted to that substance, you're going to be able to go on without it. You're not going to make life-altering decisions to continue to get that substance and make sure that you have it in your life. And that's the difference. Because if you are addicted to that substance, that's where those decisions come in. And that's where you start changing the way that you do everything. All of the stuff that you had prioritized in your life before, when you struggle with an addiction, a lot of times those priorities come way down here to the bottom. And by that, I mean like keeping a job, taking care of your family, taking care of yourself, having healthy relationships with people, dealing with your past trauma if you need to be doing that, just taking care of shit when you're in a in an addiction. And that is the biggest um, defining factor between the two of them, in my opinion. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I really, really enjoyed reading all y'all's comments. And thank you so much for leaving me feedback. I appreciate it. Hopefully this video uploads and doesn't like delete half of it. <clears throat> I love all of you guys. Thanks for coming and listening to today's video. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like it so I'll know that you like this type of content. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that big red subscribe button. I would love to have you in the family. And you guys know the drill. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Contact information is in my description box of all of my videos. If you need Narcan or if you need to be trained in how to administer Narcan, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I have it. I'll get it sent out to you ASAP. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you guys go for today. Go enjoy this beautiful day. I love you and I will see you in the next one.